So today we have this older Dodge Charger, not the brand new ones with the third brake light cut out, but it's very similar in the curvature. So a lot of people ask about these cars, how to shrink the back windows, because it's obviously the most difficult part about this car. So we're gonna go through and shrink it. So first things first, let's put the film on the back window. I already have it dryer sheeted with my glass aid. Um, we're gonna be using Avery Denison 20%. Ugh. High quality, color stable, lifetime warranty, dyed film been using Avery for a couple of years, really like it. So if you see me shrinking something in my videos, it's often this film right here. Not sponsored, unfortunately, but wish I was. So this is a 36 inch roll. We got to unroll this vertically um, and we're going to be dry shrinking it. Main reason is that is the easiest way to do this back window and also you save the most film with a 36 inch roll on a back window like this. So if you do use a 40, you can take the bottom um, extra that I'm cutting off right here, and you can move that over to like quarter windows or possibly a windshield strip, but this is 20%, which I do really, really often. This microphone is also getting really annoying. I love this thing. It's got a little mic right here. It's a Rode uh, Wireless Go. It's been a lifesaver lately. We're gonna, we might just tuck this thing up here though. So hopefully this will be able to hear me, but if I look this way, you'd never know I had a mic. I don't want to look at that dumb. <laughs> am I like super pale and blown out right now? Yes, I am. Perfect. Okay, so this is one of the most difficult back windows around. Um, it's just very bubbly. Um, so it's the most common, I call it basically the most common, most difficult car that you're going to encounter, um, at least any time, uh, recently within like the past, past five, five or 10 years now. So it's going to look very similar to all my other shrinking videos. Um, this is really just to show you a little bit more detail in how I do this. So I take this pretty slow, try not to push things too fast, but it's really a lot of pull shrinking will help. So that basically means that I'm pulling the bottom and just trying to like separate fingers. Um, so these things here, we're trying to just shrink things as evenly as we possibly can. This is also, like I said, Avery's uh, NR film, so it's a great shrinking film, and that helps. A lot of people ask me if an uh, inexpensive film will not shrink as well as an expensive film. Um, that's, that's like a weird misconception that I've been hearing lately. Uh, cheap dyed films can actually shrink very well. Not every film shrinks the same, so I'll use expensive dyed films that don't shrink very well. Most of them do. Um, however, the inexpensive ones can shrink just as well, if not better. Um, it has, shrinking has nothing to do with the quality of the film. Um, really more just what it's made out of. I am trying to get you as close as I can uh, with this monopod, and I'm gonna try and stay out of your way as much as I can to show you as much detail in this section. So this is where a lot of people are gonna run into the biggest issues. We have a lot of film here. And if you just go lock this down and try and shrink it all right here, you can get away with it, but it also helps push some out on the side. So if you saw my 06 Honda Civic shrinking video, um, you will see a very similar thing happen here too. So I always start at the lowest point and then just kind of bring everything up evenly. Sometimes I'll get a little ahead of myself in certain sections, depending on uh, the way the film is going. Shrinking is all about reading the material. I remember when I was learning, somebody told me that like, I wish I could just give you a book that would teach you how to read film. It's all just in the look of it. And you can see the way it's reacting to the heat and the, what's laying down. And if you stare at it long enough, you start to see patterns. So, see this little bunch right here? I'm gonna basically shrink this out at an angle. 
make sure it's not locking down. And then there, it all laid flat, minus this little bit, which is fine. So I can take care of that. Here is a prime example of where somebody might fuck up the film. So you could try and keep going and just force this down, but that's a lot of film all bunched up together. That's actually a really good example. So I pulled this up. So let's take care of this all together. Oh, look. It all laid down. Sweet. Let's move on. It's all about trying to take it slow, figure out where the film wants to go. All these points are really trying to show you the path that they need to be shrunk out. Like, so if you got something that's curved, if you start shrinking it here, it like all starts to lay down. It's very difficult. Oh, that's loud. <laughs> You're gonna see what this sounds like. It's all very difficult to just explain. It's best shown in uh, videos and explanation. I'm gonna have to apologize for any noise in the background. I'm in a glass shop and they have shit to do and not watch me film videos. So stuff's gonna happen, but seeing is believing. So let's go over to the top corner on this side too. It actually makes it just easier for me to just flip the camera. Um, so I probably should have started both bottom sections and then done both top sections for efficiency. Um, but it is what it is. So I just shrunk all this out while I was saying that. Um, and yeah, you get, like you have this easy section and then you start to get to the, the higher limits of the film, I think. And often what's gonna happen is so much film has to shrink together and you're gonna try and shrink it at the same speed and you're gonna work yourself into a spot that is just hard to recover from. So you just gotta like take it in stages, slow down. This side's going down super easy though. I don't have a great explanation for that other than maybe I shrunk more out on the uh, pa driver's side than the passenger side. Look at that. That's great. That's all done. I'm past my line. We're good. Let's move back to the bottom, finish this last quarter. So let's continue. We are in the final stretches. We don't want to fuck up here because it always sucks to get to the last part and then fuck something up. So you can see all where the film is wiggling, everywhere that's loose that needs to be shrunk. So let's start. It's, it's almost even. So we're gonna basically take this top section and work it down. You don't have to stay 100% even. It's something I personally like to do. I think it helps keeps, keep, help keeps. I think it helps you keep things just organized. Especially when you're starting out. Uh, it's the easiest spot to shrink to so you can get going a little bit. So look, we got all that down. I don't have to card this. All I'm doing with the soft felt card is smoothing down my film and locking it into place. And look, I got, I got some film bunching up here. Um, so again, with these corners, the bottom ones are gonna be a little easier than the top ones. Um, but same concept here. So we can flip this back, lighten it up from you know an H pattern and just kind of shrink out evenly along this line and press it down. And now I've got like my new uh, locked in spot for my H pattern and I can lift that up at any point in time. So we're again, we're pull shrinking up to a certain point because this is gonna get a little hot because I didn't leave any extra film. So I don't wanna start burning my fingies, whatever that means. You just kind of see me like mixing and matching methods. Like I, I'm, I'm blowing hot air underneath the film to warm it up. I'm shooting air up here. I'm pull shrinking. I'm just doing whatever I feel is appropriate for the time to just kind of work it all down gradually. And then you get to that point where you're like in the final little stretch. And then you can just like wham. 
you get to that like melting point. Oh, I hope I didn't just block the camera for that. But I might have. I'm sorry. That's why we're gonna make a lot more examples. So hopefully this is helpful for you guys. Once I get to this point, we're basically done. Um, we just need to polish up some edges. So I will cut out my back window. Let's start here on the bottom because that's where the camera's pointed. And I can see my glass aid nice and clear. That's why I like it. Also, feel free to buy some, link in the description. <laughs> it's not what this video is for. It's just, I'm gonna be using it on every back window, so you're gonna see it a lot, so. Because it's my own, I gotta talk about it a little bit too. We need to uh, shrink all the edges one more time. After you cut the extra, you kind of change up those, uh, like these tension lines. So the film that was holding it down in that spot has just been cut off. So some of it will lay flat and then some of it will start to finger up just a little bit. And you just wanna go over it with a heat gun. It'll take you like two seconds. We like, we got this sticker here, so it's not gonna be perfect around the sticker, but I'll get the, the heat gun within half an inch and really not melt it. You wanna to get to that point where it just locks together. So the reason I don't just go and cut my film first and then shrink it exact, largely it has to do with the type of film that I'm using. So I think I could probably do it with Avery Dennison, but there was a time that I installed Lumar and I got very used to tinting that way. But then I switched to a different film brand and it just wasn't happening very easily. All the edges were burning. So I had to go back to this method. So either way, Hope whatever you do turns out best for you. It's bright as fuck out here. I don't know if this is a good thumbnail. All right, so the charger is all set. Everything looks really good. It's super sunny out right now too. Should give you guys a really good look at what everything turned out like. Uh, we did 20% Avery all the way around. Nothing on the windshield. All right, so that's gonna wrap it up. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, if you liked anything that I used in this video, if you're curious about it, be sure to check the links in the video description. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.